Hi all, I have a mega exciting notable game to show you. I, I'm not going to use the word immortal game too much. I mean it annoys some of you so let's stick with that. Mega exciting notable game. It actually won the second best game prize at the Olympiad in 1992 which was held in Manila in the Philippines. Playing white was the Australian Grandmaster Ian Rogers. Playing black was Gilberto Milos who is a Brazilian Grandmaster, multi-time Brazilian champion, so the multi-time Australian champion playing white, meeting the multi-time Brazilian champion. Let's see what happened here. D4. And so Ian Rogers kicks off with D4. Gilberto Milos plays Knight of Six. After Knight of Three, we see D6. Interesting uh, defensive system from black. It supports an early bishop g4. Sometimes black in doing this is wanting to get a kind of French defense with the bishop outside of the pawn chain. That's a very interesting idea based on this system, or which this system is based on. Knight c3, bishop g4, because actually also if in a French defense, the knight on c3 might be blocking this. So it might make sense to try for a French defense structure. And we see actually e4, e6 h3 though kicking this bishop this bishop might be an issue does black want to give it up here well he didn't he played bishop h5 and we see queen e2 now so this is slightly discouraging moves like d5 uh, it's uh, already actually might be threatening something like queen b5 check black plays c6 And here we see g4, bishop g6, bishop g5 now. And it seems here far too dangerous given this configuration to play d5. In fact, it looks as though, well, the immediate e5 is interesting there. Black plays bishop e7, unpinning. And a very interesting uh, decision now. In Rogers gives up voluntarily without even it being kicked. He, he gives up his dark square bishop with bishop takes f6. There are specific ideas in mind. The first specific idea is this bishop. Can it be embarrassed? The second idea revolves around light squares and being able to play maybe d5 in the future and pierce black on the light squares by removing that knight. It's often uh, giving up a dark square bishop is often part of a light square strategy. Giving up a light square bishop is often the start of a dark square strategy here, though one specific goal is to try and trap the bishop. Black parries this. Now white castles queenside. Knight d7, and the king goes to b1, away from any potentially dangerous diagonals. And here, yeah, white's got a ready made attack. As well, if black castled on the king side, then there's various line openings which look terrifying. So black prepares to castle queen side. We see the move rook g1, and it still looks as though g5 or you know h5 and g5 is quite dangerous and useful for white. So black tries to seal things there, close the lines, keep the lines closed. g5, bishop e7, and now here we see this light square strategy. Note earlier I mentioned sometimes when you give up the dark square bishop, you're intensifying pressure on the light squares. This next move, d5, hits light squares. And also note bishop h3 could put more pressure on e6. And in fact, black plays e5. And this bishop is not that relevant on this diagonal. Bishop h3, it's a bit stuck there, sort of out of the game, in effect. In effect, black castles queenside. And now we see knight d2. The knight coming to c4 would give some interesting stuff like d takes maybe later. And if queen takes, white could revolve around that d5 square, trying to establish a knight on d5. King b8, knight c4. <clears throat> okay, so here it looks very uh, scary, in fact. Okay, in this position, black played knight b6. Knight takes b6. Queen takes b6. 
So has black succeeded in keeping things fairly closed? We see rook d3 as though maybe there's ideas of taking here and maybe knight a4 and trying to use this b file. This bishop does seem a lot better than this one. It seems quite dangerous and depriving black of any rook c8 at the moment. Now, if black played uh, a non-careful uh, move with the queen and king there, as an example, I'm going to show you this wasn't played, but uh, d takes, say black doesn't want to concede d5, there is knight d5 here for rook b3. So prophylaxis against this, the black king went to a8 here, and now we see the move a3, quite interesting, depriving that b4 square, rook d f8, and now bishop f5 inviting black to give up that bishop to get the e4 square, that would be very nice, and leaving black with this dreaded bishop here against a potentially nice knight on e4, so black doesn't really want to take. He plays bishop h7, and maybe he's thinking, to temporarily imprison the bishop, maybe the bishop can come out here later, or try and get it out later with f6, and then try and hit this diagonal. Rook dg1, sorry, rook gd1, pardon me. And we see yeah, this temporary, temporary imprisoning of the bishop here with g6. It looks awful, this bishop. It looks totally out of the game. In fact here, White now played uh, d takes c6, ignoring that, because uh, this knight d5 looks extremely strong in this position. Uh, and there's also some, some kingside attack possibilities. It looks far too dangerous to take the bishop here. Uh, if you want a concrete, that's actually add like a bit to there, a concrete um, example. If taking, okay, so we have this knight d5, and if the queen, say the queen goes back not to lose e7, right, in this position, rook b3, with rook takes b7, and queen a6 is, is crashing down here, if, say, b6, queen a6, threatening mate, and the black queen is overloaded here, it's going to end up losing a piece here to try and defend, but even worse, no, actually, he's just going to get mated. So yes, it's too dangerous to take that uh, bishop in this position. Far too dangerous. So we see, uh, I'll turn it off distracting. B takes C6. And now a very interesting move, bishop D7. Yes, it's got a specific idea in mind, this move. A very specific idea. That after queen c7, guess what white plays in this position? If I give you five seconds, white to play here. Fantastic move, breaking down black's defences. And exploiting the fact that this bishop's stuck here for the moment, out of the game, behind its own pawn. What would you play here with white? Okay. A brilliant move, bishop takes c6 making sure the knight can now go to d5, and the queen is going to be harassed here after queen takes knight d5, immediately threatening things like rook c3 and an infiltration maybe to c7. So black defends that c7 point with bishop d8. Nevertheless, after rook c3, queen b7, the queen, for the moment, is defending, it seems, key entry points. If we think about key entry points here, and a lot of us might have stopped our calculation here because we're thinking, well, is, is, there's no false mate or anything, so I've just given up a piece. How can, how can I carry on here? The thing is, yeah, this is just the start point. The thing is, the queen can actually be further harassed here and an entry point potentially created, if necessary, with diversionary tactics. So the queen has harassed with rook b3. Very limited choices for the queen. The queen goes to c6. But now we have a, another rook coming in with rook dd3 casually coming in. 
for the moment, Black's pieces are suffering some disconnection issues. It seems the bishop has to move to cover the back row. And it goes actually to a5. And it seems now, surely, Black has covered all the entry points. Although we've got this nice looking knight on d5, have we got anything specific to enter into Black's position? c7, b7, c8. The bishop is also stopping, it seems, bishop c3. And why would that be useful anyway? There aren't the rooks now covering things? So a piece down here. What do you think of this position? What does white play now? Remember, he's a piece down. He's got to make things work here. Otherwise, black's just going to consolidate and win a piece up. So white to play here. What would you play in this position? Okay, an absolutely brilliant move. Again, rook d c three. So black might think it's to do with c seven, but he might think his king's escaping. He takes this because he might think, well, takes and then so what? Uh, you know, there's there's possibilities. Yeah, if if a check or rook c seven, I've got things like king b seven, but. Is White forced to do the recapture here? Is he just interested in trying to get to c7? What else has White got in this position, which might be a fantastic move? A winning move, in fact, if I give you five seconds. Can you find it? You might want to pause the video. White's play here. So are the entry points covered or not? Or is it an illusion that they're covered? Five seconds more. White to play. Queen a6. A beautiful queen diversion. That knight is not just a pretty knight. Pretty horse or pretty pony as you might want to call it. It's deadly potentially this knight on d5. If queen takes, well black resigned here. It was so strong. If queen takes, knight c7 checkmate. If rook here, then white's winning the queen. This, this, I believe, is just swinging this position here, is winning for white. Let's check a few more things. All right, so I've said knight b6, this position, say so black defends there, we take this. Because of that bishop, especially, this, this is uh, winning for white quite comfortably, this position. Yeah, it's it's pretty helpless for black. Uh, so after queen a6, yes, if rook c8 is the best move, this is not good. Yep, so nice checkmate diversion. Yeah, it seems as though this bishop being out of the game really didn't help matters. But yeah, the, the sacrifice on c6 just lets the white pieces come in with some tempos and capitalizing on the fact that you don't need to automatically recapture there are massive opportunities when you think about the non recapture moves as well and this was a massive one if white hadn't have played queen a6 actually technically he's still okay after rook takes c3 here yeah, he's technically still okay this is still good for white but not a spectacular even this position, even this position, or rook down. Apparently, this is better for white. Example: check if king b8, queen a8. This this is this is still a raging attack. It shows actually that the black pieces were a little bit misplaced in this game. Yeah, and here, like the queen's being evicted out. And this would be like a mate and two there if the queen went there. It's like people have to be given up. So, yeah, it shows that the attack was really strong, but the most elegant continuation was played, which is aesthetically uh, pleasing here, much stronger than just taking on c3, which is still winning. 
Still winning, technically. But Queen A6 is the real crusher. It's the real deal. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube. I hope you got something from that. Thanks very much.